tales around the campfire, spine tingling stories from our camping trip, gather round the campfire and listen to our group's spooky tales from our recent camping trip. From unsettling encounters with wildlife to ghostly apparitions, these stories will send shivers down your spine. One friend shared a terrifying account of hearing whispers in the woods while another described seeing a mysterious shadow moving through the trees. And let's not forget the eerie folklore of the haunted cabin that had us all on edge. As we traded these tales, we couldn't help but wonder if there was something more to these stories. Are these encounters just figments of our imagination or could there be something sinister lurking in the woods? Tune in to hear the stories for yourself and decide if our camping trip was a lesson in campfire lore or an encounter with the supernatural. Please comment from 1 to 5 how scary you think this story will be. 1 meaning you do not think it will be scary at all and 5 meaning you think you will have nightmares about it. Here comes the story. The family had gone camping with their closest friends in a secluded spot deep in the woods. They had planned this trip for weeks and everyone was excited to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. As night fell, they all gathered around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing scary stories. The stars twinkled above them, casting an eerie glow on the surrounding trees. As the fire crackled and sparks glowed in the darkness, the group of friends gathered around the campfire began to share spooky stories. One of the friends, Karen, shared a story about a supposed haunted cabin not too far from where they were camping. Legend has it that a family used to live in that cabin, Karen said, her voice low and ominous. But one day they all disappeared without a trace. Since then, strange things have been happening there, sounds of footsteps, objects moving on their own, and even ghostly apparitions. The group listened with rapt attention as Karen continued, but the creepiest part is that some say that if you stand near the cabin at midnight, you can hear the ghostly whispers of the missing family, and of and sense their presence all around you. The friends all glanced nervously at each other, but secretly they were all intrigued. Finally, one of them, a young man named Mike, spoke up. It is almost midnight, let's go check it out, he suggested. It's just a story anyway, right? The group all agreed, and they set off towards the haunted cabin, driven by a mix of curiosity and fear. As they approached the cabin, the moon was high in the sky, casting strange shadows across the clearing. As they got closer, they could see that the cabin was old and dilapidated, with broken windows in an overgrown yard. Suddenly, they heard a noise from inside the cabin. It sounded like footsteps, slowly shuffling closer and closer. The group froze in terror, not daring to move or make a sound. But then, as the footsteps grew louder, they realized with a start that it was just an animal, a raccoon, in fact, that had been rummaging through the abandoned cabin. Relieved but still spooked, the friends made their way back to their campsite, where they huddled around the fire and recounted their scare. They had all been convinced that they had encountered a real ghostly presence, but in the end, it turned out to be nothing more than a raccoon in an old, abandoned cabin. They sat down at the campfire nervously waiting for someone else to tell a story. Mike cleared his throat, drawing everyone's attention. I've got a story to share with you all, that actually happened to me, he said. A few years back, I was on a camping trip in these woods with a couple of friends. One night, we were sitting around the campfire just like this, telling ghost stories to scare each other. He took a sip of water and continued, one friend told us about the legend of the headless horseman that he had heard from a local. Apparently, the ghost of a soldier who lost his head in a battle during the Revolutionary War was said to haunt the area. The legend stated that he would appear on horseback, riding through the woods, searching for his missing head. Mike chuckled, shaking his head. We didn't believe the story, of course. We thought it was just a silly myth. 
But then, in the middle of the night, we heard the sound of galloping hooves. Terrified, we peeked out of our tents, and sure enough, we saw the ghostly figure of the headless horseman riding through the trees. He paused dramatically before revealing, but, upon further inspection, we realized that it was just a prankster on horseback wearing a fake headless costume. We were all relieved and had a good laugh about it the next morning. The group chuckled at the anticlimactic ending of the story, but they appreciated the lightheartedness after the spine-tingling tales they had heard before. The next friend started to tell his story. John shared a story about a ghost that haunted the forest. They say that if you wander too deep into the trees, you'll hear her eerie moans and wails. Some even swear they've seen her apparition, a pale figure shrouded in mist. I was camping in this very spot a few years ago, a friend was telling me this exact myth. We then started to feel something touching us. The campfire was flickering, with blue flames. We could hear eerie sounds coming from the forest around us that sounded like low moans. He finished his story, and everyone shuddered at the thought. That's just a silly story, right? The youngest of the family, Sarah, asked nervously. Their host, Mike, laughed. Of course it is, Sarah, just trying to spook everyone a little. But as the night wore on and the fire died down, strange things began to happen. The sound of leaves rustling could be heard, but there was no wind. Shadows danced around the trees, seemingly alive and moving on their own. And then, they heard it, a low moan, like an animal in pain, but eerily human-like. It seemed to be coming from deep in the woods. Everyone froze, unsure of what to do. John's story had come true. Suddenly, their campfire began to flicker, the flames turning blue. They could feel their skin crawl as if something was watching them. A hand brushed against Mike's leg, and he screamed, launching himself away from the fire. But when he turned around, there was nothing there. All right, this isn't funny. Sarah cried, tears streaming down her cheeks. Let's go back to the car. But as they tried to gather their things and leave, they realized they were lost. The woods were dark and unfamiliar, and they couldn't seem to find their way back to their vehicles. And then the moaning started again, louder this time, and seemingly getting closer. They could see a figure emerging from the mist, pale and shrouded. They all screamed, running as fast as they could, not stopping until they finally stumbled upon their cars. They peeled out of the forest, leaving their campsite behind them. They never spoke of what had happened again, but every time they saw each other, they exchanged nervous glances. They knew that John's story had somehow become a reality that night, and they would never forget the terror they had experienced in those woods. Thank you for listening and I encourage you to subscribe so the next time you are in the woods the eerie figure does not come after you. I hope you have nice scary dreams. Until next time.